you're here. This is part four. We got the new shims, gonna put them in, install the cam. Let's go. <laughs> right, I've got everything nicely laid out here on the healing bench. There's not many tools that we are going to need to check the valve shims and work out what size new shims are we going to be using. I cannot stress this enough how important it is to document everything, especially when you're working on engine components. Although the shim size is written on the shim itself, we still want to double check that with a micrometer. And I do suggest using a better quality micrometer like a Mitutoyo or a Starrett. Don't use the cheapos. <laughs> After measuring the shims, we determined that they are the size they say they are, which is a good thing. We might be able to reuse these shims on different valves, depending on what sizes are we going to need next. Next step is to work out what size new shims are we going to need. In order to determine that, we need to refer to the valve clearance table. I'll put this up on the screen so you can see it better. What we need to do is take the measured valve clearance, which in our case for valve number one is uh, 0.21 find that in the table on the first column you can see here 0.21 to 0.25 so we go across horizontally on uh, on this row and try to find the measured valve shim number which is in the top row so the valve shim number we measured for valve number one on cylinder one is 187 you might notice there is no 187 valve shim here that's not a problem because if we go back to the um, service manual, we need to round the original valve pad number according to the following table. The way we do this is we take the last digit of the actual valve shim number. If it's zero or two, we round the value to zero. If it's five, obviously we keep it at five and uh, any value closest to five will be five and anything above eight will round up to 10. So in our case, the 186, we're gonna round that to 185. So we're gonna go ahead and look that up in the table. Uh, valve shim 185 and the new valve shim is a 190. We are going to need. So I'll write that down. Uh, for valve number two, we've got measured 194. So we'll round that up to 195. And again, check the valve clearance 0 0.23. Uh, that's this row here, and go to 195. So we're gonna need a 200 here. Valve number three, we've got it at 188, we call that 190. Valve clearance is uh, 0 0.20, which is here. Well, that's still considered the standard clearance. I'll size up the valve shim, because I want to be on the lower limit, and that will account for, for future wear. So with 190, we'll need a 195 here. And for cylinder two, Valve clearance 0.23 with 184 the valve shim. Uh, it's called a 185. That's a 190 here. Valve 2. 0.24 clearance, 195 shim. Gonna need a 200. And valve 3. We've got 0.21 clearance with 185. We're gonna need a 190. So these are the new shims that we are going to need. I have ordered the new valve shims and luckily they have arrived. So we can go ahead and install them. If we have a look in the service manual, it is recommended to lubricate the valve shims with molybdenum disulfide grease. So we are going to do just that. Okay, and this goes into valve number one on cylinder one so that's a 190 shim 
just wanted to double check, make sure we got the correct shim. Cylinder one valve one, it's a 190. Cylinder two, we need a 200. Cylinder three, one nine five. I'm installing the valve shims with the numbers facing up in case I ever need to remove them. Cylinder number three, we need a one ninety again. Valve two on cylinder two, that will be at 200. And valve three on cylinder two is a 190. Once we've got all the valve shims installed, we need to lubricate the top part as well uh, with molybdenum disulfide grease. We need to do this because obviously the bike's been sitting here for so long, all the oil has drained out. And when we start the engine, we don't want the cam running dry on the valve lifters, not even for a split second. Now we can safely go ahead and install the valve lifters, the valve buckets. These need to be lubricated with molybdenum grease as well. Now we're ready to install the cam. It's important to lubricate the cam journals with engine oil. I've already done that. The way to install the cam is we just lay it into, into the cam journal. And we don't need to worry about it being in time at this moment. Also, the journals on the cam caps need to be lubricated with engine oil as well and the bolts need to be lubricated with engine oil as well because the torque spec specified in the factory service manual is uh, with all the bolts lubricated with oil Important thing to note, you see that arrow on the cam caps that needs to be facing towards the um, cam chain. Thank you. 
The camshaft cap bolts need to be tightened to 10 newton meters and we need to do it starting from the inside out and in a crisscross pattern. And we also, it's also important to do it in stages. Once we got the camshaft installed, all the cam cap bolts torqued down to spec, we need to make sure that we bring the intake camshaft into time, which means these timing marks need to be parallel with the edge of the cylinder head. That means we need to turn the camshaft clockwise. There's an unorthodox way of doing this, which is using the socket on the camshaft gear uh, bolt and turning it with that. It doesn't take too much force to turn actually. So we are not gonna over tighten that bolt anyway. So that is pretty much bang on, I think. Can't really see. Uh, the camera maybe a little bit more. There, that's a bit too much. There, that is perfect. And now we can install the timing chain. A few moments later. Now, here's a little problem. I can't put the timing chain on because one of the bolts is uh, is in the way. It's just down there. So what I need to do is, I need to rotate the camshaft back, uh, move the timing chain onto the other side, and then put it into time. So let's do that. Right. As you saw, the snap back because of because the valve springs are applying pressure to the cam lobes. Now, I'll move this here. Make sure it clears the bolt. And then I'll start turning the cam. to make sure that the timing chain is uh, nice and tight between the two camshafts. See, that's, uh, that's no good. Now, the problem here is uh, is that my timing chain is quite stretched anyway, which I will be replacing at a later stage. So I won't be able to, to properly time this engine. Just because of that, it's quite a bit of stretch. Now, that's the best it fits, which is no good for us. That is too loose. What I'll do is I will 
rotate the intake camshaft uh, this way, just in order to apply some tension to the top of the chain, which will take my intake cam slightly out of time, as you can see on the screen here. But it's not an issue because I will be replacing the timing chain at a later stage anyway. What we need to do next is we need to install the timing chain tensioner, turn the engine around a couple of times, then bring it back to TDC and uh, recheck the valve clearance. I have already installed a timing chain tensioner off camera. I've uh, turned the engine around a couple of times, brought it back to TDC and checked the valve clearance. Now all the valve clearances are uh, within spec, which is good. I'm not going to install the valve cover in this video because uh, I am planning on changing the timing chain anyway. So stay tuned for, for that video as well. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, share, I'm out.